Hi, I'm Dr. Katie Nelson, and I'm a proud parent to a three and a half year old little boy and a little girl to be. I'm also a proud pet parent, and I want to help you to be the best pet parent that you can possibly be. Today we're going to answer a few viewer questions. So our first question that we're going to address is from Brooke in Mount Vernon, Virginia. Um, Brooke writes to us and asks us how in the world is she supposed to get her chihuahua, who's five years old, a female chihuahua, to lose weight. She's got another chihuahua who's seven years old in the house. He's a male um, and he's actually a perfect weight, but her younger female is very, very overweight. So this is something that we encounter a lot in veterinary medicine is the multi-pet household and how to try and address the nutritional needs of one while you know not forgetting about the nutritional needs of another. So first off, I would say, Brooke, you definitely need to take your female chihuahua into her veterinarian and make sure she doesn't have a problem that is attributing to her weight issue. Is she hypothyroid or is there something else going on maybe arthritis or something that's preventing her from exercising as much as your other guy. Um, in reality, most of the time, it doesn't come out that they've got major issues. It really truly comes out to they're either A, not expending enough energy, or B, they're taking too much in. So really and truly have a long conversation with your veterinarian and, and talk to them about what type of food you need to be on, how much exactly you need to be feeding, and try to amp up the exercise as much as possible for her and as well as your other guy, because even though he is a good weight, Exercise is never a bad thing for these guys. So really and truly having your veterinarian involved is going to be one of the best things you could possibly do to address that weight issue. Next question we have today is actually from Kendra in Michigan. Kendra writes to us and asks me how in the world she's supposed to address some arthritic issues in her elderly cat. She's talked about trying to get some medications to give to her cat with her veterinarian. But there just doesn't seem to be a lot of options for her. Kendra, you are right, first off. There are not a lot of options out there for treating arthritis in a cat. Um, in people, we have Advil, we have Tylenol, we have, you know, Naproxen. In dogs, we have Remedil, we have Deramax. All of these things are in a category called NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Um, these are things that really for cats are not good for them. You cannot, first off, give any human medications to your cat. Tylenol can absolutely be fatal, fatal, so please don't give that to your kitty cat. Um, first thing though that I would do is talk with your veterinarian a little bit further. Make sure that there's nothing going on in your kitty that you need to be addressing that it's not you know, actually a tumor, God forbid, or something like that that's going on in those bones, that it's just the aging process that's getting your cat into the position where they are. The other thing you really need to think about is think about your kitty's weight. If your kitty is the least bit overweight, then that for me would be priority number one, getting the weight down on your cat because any extra weight that we've got on those little fragile bones in a cat is really gonna to be too much stress on those joints. And finally, if it does come down to just being arthritis, just arthritis, then talk with your veterinarian about joint supplements, different things that you can do, maybe just nutritional supplementation because again, staying away from those insects is really important. Cats can't process those, it ends up hurting their kidneys. So trying to do the best thing um, nutritionally for your cat is probably gonna be the best thing that you can do as far as helping alleviate pain. And there are some different pain drugs that you can use. Again, that would all be something to talk to your veterinarian about, but there are options for you. You just need to look a little further, okay? Good luck. Alright, our final question of the day today is from Sandra in Mill Valley, California, and Sandra has a pretty cool question. Sandra's writing to ask if dogs can get sunburned, and most dogs, I would say, aren't really going to have that problem. Most dogs that have a lot of hair coverage on their face are really not going to have that issue, but if you think about white dogs, they have a lot of pink skin, oftentimes they don't have a whole lot of hair on the bridge of their nose. Um, so those dogs absolutely are going to be able to get sunburn. Um, so what you really need to do is look at a sun protection, to add some sun protection that is made for children or for babies, the no tears kind of sunscreen, because that's the sort of thing that even if your dog licks it or if it gets into your dog's eyes, it's not going to be a problem, it's not going to hurt anything. So 
Look into some of the baby sunscreens out there and if you have a very fair skinned dog where you're seeing pink coming through their hair either on their face or on their body or if you've got a dog that's a sunbather, the dogs that lay on their back with their bellies up in the air to the sun, then those are the dogs that are definitely going to qualify for getting some sunscreen on them. Again though, most dogs it's really not going to be an issue, but those white haired pink skinned dogs are going to be the ones you're going to want to protect when they go out in the sun. Great question.